What we have here then are the prices of buying the same things, the same fixed market basket as it's called, of gas, burgers, and movie tickets at three different times, January 07, January 08, January 09. And the units for these numbers are dollars. It's the price in dollars. Seems trivial now, but that'll be important in a second. Can I ask you a question? Please. You pick a basket that corresponds, the, the actual basket is enormous. Probably 30,000 prices are tracked by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Some fictional average consumer's consumption. A little bit of peanuts, a little lot of gasoline, a lot of rented housing, a little bit of airline travel, a little bit of car insurance. So what about, say, you're talking about something in the 30s and you're talking about something today? Yes, and that's why price indices are only good at measuring inflation a for the typical consumer because if you don't buy the if you don't buy gasoline and burgers and movie tickets then this index is not going to be very good for you number two they're only good for comparing for measuring inflation over relatively short periods of time because exactly as you say if you ask the question how much have prices risen in the united states since 1930 the only way you could answer that question is by using a price index that compares the price of buying the same things in 1930 and now, and with the exception of a couple relatives of mine I could think of, I don't think there are a lot of people who are buying the same thing in 2009 that they bought in 1930. So that's why a price index is only really good for measuring, that's qu fair enough, for inflation over a year or two, three, five years, even 10. But beyond that, for people who try to measure m inflation in medieval Europe, how much did prices rise between 1300 and 1500? Not going to be very accurate. And the first point, to the extent that what you buy is different from what goes into the statistical abstraction of this fixed market basket, if what you buy is different from what the so-called typical consumer buys, then the CPI that comes from the Government Bureau of Labor Statistics is not going to be your personal CPI. Fair enough? Yep. Okay. Now, exactly what we want to do here is use these numbers to figure out what was the inflation rate. And the way we do that, the way we measure inflation, is first to convert these dollar numbers into index numbers. The CPI, the Consumer Price Index, is one kind of price index, but the principle is the same no matter what index is used. And the what you do first is pick a base year and say that if 2007 is going to be the base year, I just picked it arbitrarily, we'll see later on that it doesn't matter what year I pick, then in the base year the value of the index is 100. That's what base year means. Then what's the value of the index in 2008 and what's the value of the index in 2009? Let's say it's going to be X in 2008 and Y in 2009, and we want to solve for those. For X, the value of the index in 2008, we say, well, what is 135 as a percentage of 90? And the answer is 135 is exactly 150% of 90, because half of 90 is 45. So one and a half times 90 gives you 135. So the value of x is 150. Which is another way of saying that it costs you 150% of what it cost you in 2007 to buy the same things in 2008. The 2008 cost $135 is 150% of the 2007 cost, $90. And we find Y just the same way. Is it 100% or is it 50%? It's 100, it costs 150%, which is to say it costs 50% more. 50% more. Because what we're measuring here in the CPI is not actually inflation. Inflation is the rate of change of the price index. What we're measuring in the CPI is 
the overall price level. We say that the if the overall price level was 100 in 2007, it's risen to 150 in 2008. So the price level has risen from 100 to 150. The inflation rate was 50%. That's what we'll derive in just a sec. And it's worth, thank you for that question, because it helps us notice that the units, the units of these numbers, index numbers, there are no units. They're pure numbers. It's 100, 150, and whatever we find for Y. But this is not dollars we're measuring. It's just the level of a price index. So for Y, we take 117 and compare it. Once again, we have to compare it to the base year. You always compare it to the base year. Compared to 90 in the base year. And we will get 130. So 130 is the value of y. So now we have our index numbers. We have made an index. And this is what will allow us to measure inflation. We haven't measured inflation yet. We've just set up the price index. But if we want to know, for instance, what was the inflation rate between 2007 and 2008, we're going to compare the values of the index in those two years. The second year minus the first year, 150, the value of the index in the second year compared to the value of the index in the first year, divided by the value of the index in the first year, times 100, which of course will be 50 over 100 times 100, which is 50. So 50% 50 is the rate of inflation when the CPI went from 100 to 150. Things cost 50% more. But how about here? This should be a little trickier. What's the rate of it? We could kind of eyeball the first one. Okay, it goes 100 from 150. That looks like things went up by 50%. How about from 2008 to 2009? That's a little trickier. We see that prices went down, but by how much? Well, take the year you end up with, 130, subtract from it the value for the year you started, because we're trying to go from 08 to 09, and divide it by the first year, the starting year, 150 times 100. And now this is going to be a negative number. You'll get minus 20 over 150 times 100 will give you minus 13 and a third percent. So inflation was minus 13 percent from 2008 to 2009. And then if you want to figure it out for over a two-year period from 07 to 09, you would again take the year you finish with, 130 minus 100 over 100 times 100 will be plus 30 percent, which is in two years. So in one year from 07 to 08, prices went up 50 percent. In the next year, in one year, they fell by 13 and third percent. Over the two-year period, From $90 to $117 is an increase of 30% in two years. Now, that's interesting in itself, but we can take it one step further. Let's see. How do I get onto a new page? Well, we'll stop here. We'll stop here and we'll make another one. Oh, 
Okay, here we go. Thank you. What we're going to see now is that inflation is independent of the choice of base year. Which is kind of interesting, but sort of a technical point. So if you're interested, look at this. What if we decide to make 2008 the base year? Well, then we'd have, remember our figures, for 2007, $90, 2008, $135, 2009, $117. What if we had decided to make this, 2008, the base year? Well, then the value of the index of our CPI would be 100 in the base year, because that's the definition of a base year. But we could construct a new index, give ourselves index numbers for 2007 and 2009. How would we do that? Let's say that for 2007, we'll call that W. And for 2009, we'll call that Z, or as they say in New Zealand, Z. Uh, so for Z, we take 100, we want to compare 117 to 135. So let's do it. Z will be equal to 117 over 135. Whoops, didn't work out very well. Times 100, which gives us 86 and two-thirds. I have a fun number. But notice, right away, that looks about right. It should be less than 100. The price went down from 135 to 117, so it should be something less than 100, the index number. How about W? Compared to $135, what is 90 well if you divide that through you find out that 90 is 66 and two-thirds percent of 135 so W So now we've constructed new decks from the same original dollar numbers, $90 to buy it in 07, 135 to buy it in 08, 117 to buy it in 09. Using the exact same dollar numbers, we've created a new CPI just because we decided to use 2008 as the base year. And the somewhat interesting technical point we can prove here is that you get the same inflation rates. This is the beauty of index numbers. It doesn't matter what year you pick as the base year. This is what allows you to update it over time. You'll still have the problem that you're pretending people bought the same thing, but you don't have to make all these comparisons way back to the price level in 1930 because you can update the base year anytime you want once you've got the figures. So let's see, if we wanted to in measure, once again, inflation between 07 and 08, we'd now be comparing these two numbers. If the index rises from 66 and two-thirds to 100, how much inflation is that? Well, using the same formula as before, the value in the second year, 100, minus the value in the first year, 66 and two-thirds, divided by the value in the first year, times 100 gives you 33 and a third over 66 and two-thirds in other words 50 percent inflation which is what we got before so that checks so to speak 
Same as before, the choice of base year did not affect the measured rate of inflation. If we decide to look at inflation from 08 to 09, using once again the same formula, now we're looking here, how much inflation is that? Well, prices are going down, how much are they going down? Well, you can kind of eyeball this one. They went down, well, let's do it out. 86 and 2 thirds minus 100 as a ratio of 100 is going to be minus 13 and a third over 100 times 100 equals minus, which was again the same result we got before. And I just won't bother with the other one, but 07, 09, we would do it the exact same way. So the measure you get for inflation does not depend on the base year you chose. But remember that the CPI measures the typical consumer's It measures the increase in price level as experienced by the typical consumer, that is to say, the fictitious person who happens to buy exactly the combination of goods and services of movie tickets and gasoline and life insurance and rent and electricity and bottled soda and diet soda that the government uses to construct the CPI, because the government just publishes one CPI. Secondly... I, I'll bet it's, yes, they do, and I'll bet it's less than 10 years. But you could find that out, how often they update it. Because that is, of course, the second problem here. The longer a time period you keep the same basket of goods, the less realistic it is. Because the CPI has no way to deal with new products, for instance. If you're comparing inflation, if you're comparing the price level today to 1970, if you want to know how much a price has risen since 1970, well, what do you do with cell phones? What do you do with internet access? What do you do with DVDs? None of those was for sale in 19... VHS tapes weren't for sale in 1970, as old men like you and I know. So, to the extent that you try to stretch the CPI over a long time period, you lose accuracy. Well, yeah, well uh, uh, yes, probably systematically, but what it amounts to is that you, can get pr you could get a pretty good measure of inflation from 1940 to 45 with fixed factors. So you have a series of series, and then from 45 to 50, and then from 50 to 55, and somewhere in there between 1970, 75, 75 to 80, 80 to 85, oh, now you have VCR recorders. And 85 to 90, now you have the second generation of VCR recorders, and now you have video rental service would be part of it. And it would be relatively expensive compared to 1995, where video rental is getting cheaper. But, oh, now you have these DVDs and DVD recorders, uh, DVD players. So, does that answer your question? You'd have a series of short measurements. Okay? Let's wrap it there.